Okay, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me to speak here today. And uh, I'm talking about also the new law that we are going to have. And not only the dispute resolution, we are doing that also, but I'm a public sector representative. Uh, actually, when you're looking at our organization, you can't even see domain names there, but you will actually, they would be here in products and services. Uh, we also do the SMS numbering there, plus handling of unaddressed postal items. Um, but we have about 250 people working for Finnish Communication Regulatory Authority. And anyway, the stakeholders group that we are in is also taking care of a general guidance and customer relationship management and coordination of data collection and publication. But as you can see, we are doing everything in the field of telecom. But anyway, FICORA is a public authority and uh, responsible for uh, FI root services and administration of .fi names. We still have the dual mode, it's going to go away. When we get the new law, we have about 2,000 registrars, but uh, not everyone is active, maybe 800 are active and using their account. Uh, we have, I think, less around 10 foreign registrars. Accreditation is not required, we have 370 five or seven thousand, I think the last number is 377 of domain names and um, most of them, 82% are registered by companies and we have a dispute resolution which is actually free of charge and uh, we only have to uh, intervene afterwards by request of the right holder. We have like three lawyers working for everything, three technical specialist and uh, you could say that customer service would be six people but they also service for others other functions of FICORA and one manager uh, then the changes in regulation this is very important we have this law we've had it since 2003 the domain name act but it's going to be revoked um, we are now part of this really huge law called Information Society Code, uh, but you can find like there are eight acts that have been now put together. And nowadays it's, uh, we, we really have to have this consolidated version on our website of this new law because the domain name sections are scattered in five parts of the law. I think that's a little bit difficult difficult for anyone to try to find uh, what sections from the Information Society code are actually uh, concerning you if you are a registrar, for example, or a holder of a domain name. But we don't have any contracts. We do have the law and then we have this regulation. And uh, I have been working almost two years, uh, well, something like that, with the regulation that is going to be also Mm, coming into force on the 5th of uh, September 2016. The overall changes in the law are the register registrar model and then especially the new responsibility for the information security of uh, the registrar operation and also the obligation to inf inform of significant security incidents. Uh, then, when it comes to dispute resolution, so we've been doing this since 2003. Uh, and the change is going to be so that anyone can register a domain name. At the moment, you should be 15 years old, you should have a, a domicile in Finland and a social security number. Uh, but in the future, next September, 2016. There will be no HO local presence uh, requirement anymore. So we will not be having cases of, of this. We've had these cases and so less cases 
around this matter. And also, at the moment, the combination of natural, person, natural person's first and last name together, they are now protected, but not in the future. Uh, the family name has never been protected as such, unless it's a trademark or something like that. And then we have a black list at the moment. Uh, we have this list of insulting expressions. Just uh, last week, a journalist wanted to have that, but we made a decision in writing that he can appeal. We are not going to give out that list because it's um, something that we cannot supervise this matter if we have to give that out. Luckily, we are getting rid of this very awkward list, I say. I think it's not a figurous a job to have lists like that. Mm. And also the domain names used globally or as country code will become available when the new law comes into force. So what more law changes concerning dispute resolution? At the moment, we have a section on where, uh, that is forbid forbidding warehousing for the purpose of uh, re-delivery, re -delivery, and it's going to go away, which is quite nice, because we've had three cases going to the Supreme uh, Court. We won uh, one case, and then we lost one case, and then one was even. And um, a lot of work, very difficult to prove anything, um, just the wasting our resources on those cases, so it will be a big change in the law. And then we have this new section uh, that we try to have a faster way of resolving clear type of cases, but I still have to say that we will see what is going to be clear cases and uh, how we are going to use this power, but at least we are going to have that power in the law. And then I think one way of trying to be faster is also that now the law is saying that we can use the email address to inform about uh, the decisions that we make. And um, if you get, well, when we are sending this email, the documents deemed to have been received on the third day unless provided otherwise. So this would help us to be faster in our work. Uh, but legal rules that do not change, the trademarks are still protected and trade names when you have registered them. And the registrant has to check the names entered into the registrars of trade and associations and foundations and political parties. Uh, trademarks entered into the Finnish or European Community Trademark Register are protected, so the holder, the registrant should check, check these. And it's easy to do it on our website. Mm. Also, by law, we have the names of public bodies already now protected and registration data must be accurate. Uh, Illegal transfer can be corrected, but not always, depending on the case. Sometimes it's a messy thing about who has the right to do something in a company. We are looking at our registration data and uh, we will be deciding based on that. If there are other problems, they have to go to the court. And uh, we have this... Um, in the law, we have this section that the court of law can forbid the use of a domain name, but we've never had any case where the court of law would have done that and informed us about this. But it's still there, and the trademark owners actually thought that it would be important for them to have it. So the claims concerning violations of names or trademarks are divided into two categories and um, we have the exact matches and we have the derivative derivatives and uh, we are looking only at the time of the registration so I have noticed that uh, there is for example the question of bad use bad faith 
after the registration. We don't have that. We don't think about that. It's, we are just looking at the time of the registration. Whether you had it when you registered or you did not. Uh, this acceptable reason is not really defined in the law uh, so that it's anything that is legally relevant. And so we have some case law on that and we have been informing about the public uh, on our website of our decisions. And then where you are to, uh, looking at the clear intent of registering the domain name or benefiting from it or causing damage. Of course, these are quite difficult cases when you have to think about that, but we will always proceed when we make decisions. We will keep on digging until we are ready to make a decision which can be appealed. And the procedure for dispute cases is that the holder of the protected name or trademark can re request the revocation. You can do it by email, e-form. We freeze the domain name until the case has been decided on. We will hear the parties. Now, the law says at the moment that you have two weeks time to answer, but depending on the case, you can ask for more time if you want to. And we usually will give that unless we can see that somebody is playing the time and then we, we might decide otherwise. So the, the appeal court is the market court in Helsinki and the Supreme Administrative Court, but only by permission uh, for the parties. But actually FICORA can still appeal, even though the others need this permission, which is quite interesting. So at least if we think that it's very important to get it to the Supreme Court, we, will, we would be able to do it, or do it also our, ourselves, but usually probably I would say that the parties would be able to make that, make that claim and ask for the highest court to decide. So we have about three legal, I'm saying three legal, we have like four people, uh, but um, two of them I'm using half of the time. And we have about 100 cases. When we started uh, um, around 10 years ago, we had 50 cases. Sometimes it's been, in one year, it was about 130 cases decided. But it's around 100, usually. The average handling time is that, but it could be more or less, depending on the case. We, are, we don't really have the kind of um, fast track as uh, .se has, but we have kind of made it ourselves so that we divide the cases. And if we see that this is a clear case, exact match, that is uh, infringing on a trademark or trade name, we will um, decide on it in a faster, we are just dividing those cases so that uh, somebody is doing the fast ones in order to be as quick as possible because then with the deri derivatives, uh, sometimes they can be pretty difficult to decide on. And I have noticed that we have been having like more revocations lately, but we've had more cases of uh, exact matches so that could be a trend, but usually about 20% of the cases that uh, the parties, they decide that, okay, they have a solution, maybe they nego negotiate or something like that. So that has been around, uh, that 20% has been the same all the time, I would say. But anyway, our role and the legislation, uh, the thing is that, um, we have this very detailed legislation. We have uh, specific legislation. And so this is what we do. It is our power to do only this. Uh, we are not authorized to assess the lawfulness of website content 
or to order the content to be removed or revised or order website to be closed. We can't do that. And then we had this copyright infringement case. Um, it was uh, last year in the summertime. We made an interpretation on domain name used with a purpose of committing a crime. At the moment, we have this section in law. What does it mean? That was our decision about how we see this special section. It's actually um, the kind of section that is going to be revoked. It's not going to be in the new law because we actually did not want to have this. It has not been uh, justified well. I don't think that it's, quali it's qualifying for good legislation. Uh, if you want, if a prosecutor wants to wants to terminate the name, it would be a temporary termination for one year maximum, and it, uh, the domain name would be disconnected from the DNS. But anyway, the prosecutor was requesting this in a case that was about copyright infringement, and we, uh, Ficora, de declined. We feel that, uh, well, we actually have this translated in, into English, this decision also, and uh, in, in this decision, um, we were considering that uh, a web page content cannot as such be the reason for terminating a domain name. That domain name and web page content uh, are two different concepts, which are also subject to different legislation. We, are, we were considering the purpose of the Domain Name Act and uh, we are not competent to assess the legal legality of material published on web page. And then, um, Elizabeth was talking about the Pirate Bay case, but it never came to us in Finland. Only the telecom companies were affected by this Pirate Bay mess, you could say. Mm, the telecom companies were mm, asked to hinder the IP address, uh, the access to IP addresses and also the domain names on their servers. And that's how uh, this whole thing was um, decided in Finland. Nobody ever came to talk about these things. They were just asking why and we would then explain what has happened in the courts. And um, when I'm looking at the Finnish um, legislation around the web communications, when it comes to illegal content, we have three laws. We have the Information so Society Code. It actually has now the e-commerce directive rules in it. And it re regulates the exception, exemption of service providers acting as intermediaries from liability. Mm. A court may issue an order to disable access to the information if the information is clearly such that keeping its content available to, uh, to public or its transmission would be punishable or basis for civil liability. Um, so, the order is aimed at service provider referred to in section, well, whatever, uh, in practice the so-called hosting services, maintenance services for web pages, storage of the information submitted by the customer. Mm, so, well, this has then in our opinion, nothing to do with us and our domain name disputes. And also the Copyright Act, we have this section 60 that the court may order, make, make, can make an order. 
so that uh, there is an injunction to discontinue. And the Supreme Court has stated that if you contribute to producing illegal content or cooperate with content provider, then you are responsible. Um, also, the third law that I am um, that is uh, concerning illegal content that is the ex act on exercise of freedom of expression in mass media, and also there the court can make an order to cease the distri distri distribution of a network message. So, Figura has the view that the legislation concerning the content of web communications supports Figura's view that the legislation concerning domain names and web pages should, be, should not be mixed with each other. And also we have the, our uh, task it's, and our authority is precisely defined in the law, so we can't just do anything So this is my last slide. Uh, when I was making this presentation, I was wondering, I don't have these que uh, answers always, but I have some questions and some uh, ideas. What is the legal nature of a domain name? When Elizabeth was talking about confiscating from IIS, I thought that was a little bit funny in my opinion that it would be the IIS that something w was confiscated because, in my opinion, there is no domain name until you register it. And so that's why the registry would not be, in my opinion, the right uh, party when it comes to confiscation. I think confiscation would be concerning the holder, but anyway, uh, According to the Finnish legislation, the domain name is really transferable. You can actually sell it. Mm, but the thing is that if you have uh, registered it against the Domain Name Act that we are supervising, we are able to take the domain name away from you. And then we had this case uh, where there was this company that went bankrupt. And so the owner of the company, after the bankruptcy decision by court, decided to transfer the domain name to her. And then this um, trustee of the estate informed us and said that, you know, this uh, domain name belongs to the estate. And we, so we made this decision, and uh, then the holder, well, the person who, yeah, it was a holder because she had already done the transfer. Then she uh, made an appeal, but uh, the court confirmed that the domain name belonged to the bankrupt's estate. We have al also have some uh, requests by police to for or feature, or could you say confiscation, seizure? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I think all of these English terms could be the right ones. Uh, but we just explained, we were looking at, of course, well, I was looking at the sections of the law, and um, how this law on coercive methods of criminal investigation is written. Um, I thought, well, okay. Looks like it's possible to do this seizure. And so we froze the domain name and we informed the police that uh, now it's frozen. Now the holder can't do anything. They can use, of course, if they have websites or something like that, it's possible. Uh, but um, nothing came. Uh, the police was okay with this and they never um, contacted us afterwards. It's still frozen, actually. I really have to do something about it. But uh, the thing is that uh, I think the police should, ha or somebody. I think it, in this case, uh, the holder once contacted us and wanted to have the authorization key, maybe to transfer it. And we just informed that it's frozen because of this. And then again, I heard nothing from that 
person either. And then we had a case of this um, distraint, where the um, distraint uh, officer gave this order to do this execution. Sounds pretty bad. But anyway, again, we froze the two domain names, and they were not renewed. So the thing is that um, they are not there anymore. So if you don't pay, then the domain name is not renewed. And so the whole case was just like up in there. And when it comes to the phenomenon, okay, these questions that there are about domain names and the legal nature, they are not very easily going away. I'm just thinking that maybe there should be specific legislation just to have rules to have this more clarity in the legal discussion. But when it comes to phenomena, in Finland we are seeing that we have this drop catching. It's a phenomenon at the moment. It's not really illegal. For some, it is a business model. Uh, if you are not renewing your domain name, it will have a one month guarantee in time. And then it's free for anyone to have. But I would say that there's there is at least a risk of bad publicity for the CCTLD. And the dispute resolution doesn't always help if you have let go of your domain name. So I guess the message is that if your domain name is important, you should pay it and renew it. But I guess, you know, that's, that's all I have this last page here. So you can actually find information on our website on the decision-making practice. We have written there everything that we are, that we can say, which is clear. And then on the, also the information on the law change, so you can find that on ev everything on our website. And if you have any questions, you can always email me. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsi. Uh, does anyone have a question for Kirsi? Yes. Thank you um, for the presentation, Kirsi. Um, I'm Martin from uh, Le Marit, a German uh, registrar, and uh, I have three questions, actually. The release of the com.fi and the blacklist domain names, is there any release process planned? Something like an auction or something like, uh, or is it just free? And my second... Uh, sorry, can you say louder, is it what? Your, this blacklist you have right now, the blacklist, yes. Yeah, the blacklisted domain names. You will release them next year, right? Uh, and is there a release pro process planned? Or is, uh, no, how do you plan to do that? Well, actually, <laughs> we, we have to think about that. Because it's really an ugly list. I guess, uh, I think I guess it's so. Very, you know, I, I'm, I'm so ab embarrassed, embarrassed about the whole list because it's, it's full of swear words and all kinds of nasty things that we really would not like to have any publicity for that and uh, maybe we will just, you know, because as, as I said before, the domain name is something that you will create when you are re registering. And so it will be very interesting to see uh, in the future if we are going to get any complaints for politicians or the public on some domain names that are quite terrible. Because we have already also made one decision on, to some party years ago, where he wanted to have really nasty domain names and we, we actually canceled them. We revocated them and then we made this person to make the, the, the appeal and he went all the way up to the highest court, but the highest court was thinking that also that, yes, really bad domain names, but of course you have the freedom of speech, so I don't know, what about the Swedes, how, how bad 
ideas people have on domain names, but okay. Okay, thank you. So think about, I, I'm, I'm very curious what, you, uh, what your findings are in, in this case. Um, <laughs> Um, two, You're two not the only one. <laughs> two, two more questions. You will stop um, from next year sending letters um, regarding new registrations? Yes. Good. Um, and do you have any idea or any plans to change the pricing after the uh, At the moment, we don't have any plans to do that. The pricing probably is going to be around the same. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Do we have any more questions? Oh, Mr. Turbian, my boss. <laughs> I just want to give our Finnish friends an advi advice. Uh, you, you are sitting on a treasury chest with this blacklist. <laughs> yeah, you are. You really are. And, um, for example, the, only the two letters the ISO uh, character codes for countries are probably worth more than 400,000 euros. TV.FE, for example. And if you have nasty words in your <laughs> database and going to release them, then it could bring in a lot of money. So, actually, uh, for .se, when we decided to release our blacklist. We did a, propose, a proposal to the internet community in Sweden and to the authorities, and they ga gave us the advice, do an auction. That's the best way to do it. And mm -hmm. uh, that was yeah, but very well. According to the law, we can't do any auctions can't. You know, on uh, domain names. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am just going to burn the list. All right. That yes. will be, it, so if it will be a, a release, um, just as a normal uh, drop caching, I hope you knew the EPP system you are building really can handle the, a lot of transactions, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's going to be, we are facing a really big yeah. change in our operation, so we okay. will have a lot of things to think about and, yeah. and uh, Maybe surprises will come along as well, but that's life. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do you have <laughs> any you. more questions to Kirsi? No, so thank you so much for your okay. presentation. Thank you.